Let's get into it. So of course, it's the aftermath of Rook's rest. Cole's plan was to take that castle and then head to Harrenhal, but Aegon's injuries require that they head back to King's Landing immediately. We see Aemon here with a smug look on his face, and he has the Valyrian steel dagger that will be important later on. Side note, if the dagger was on fire when Aemon found it on Aegon's body, then that must mean that Aemon saw the prophecy, right? Leave your thoughts down below on that, because I'd love to get into that later. Of course, it was Aegon who killed her. We know from last season that Aemon doesn't really care about glory of the kill, but as it stands, he is the king now. In the show, Aegon only had one son, and because he never declared his daughter the new heir, like Viserys did with Rhaenyra, Aemon is technically in charge, since Aegon is incapacitated, and he is the next male in line, at least in the show. We also briefly see that Aemon settles into this role by putting the king's stone ball on the coaster later on in the preview. However, in the next shot, we see that Rhaenyra is in a conversation with Alfred Broom discussing plans to take King's Landing, and they need the Riverlords for that. Alfred has been quite outspoken about her hesitation to get the war started, and that's understandable. Rhaenyra is out here undertaking side missions while her council lose their lives supporting her, but in the next scene we can see that Daemon is threatening the Riverlanders into submission, specifically House Bracken. In this episode, we got the idea that the Blackwoods wanted Daemon to destroy the Bracken armies, but it looks like Daemon's plan is to force them into submission, and into Rhaenyra's camp. We also see him with an Axe and what looks like men rebuilding Harrenhal, which makes me wonder if he's trying to make Harrenhal his own kingdom, because we hear that Alice's voice is hanging over him, telling him he was made to wear a crown. It's not quite clear where Alice stands on the war, but it is clear that she's trying to mess with him, perhaps even turn him against Rhaenyra, and I think this is a fake out. That we'll see towards the end of the season when Daemon eventually meets up with Rhaenyra again, and we're supposed to feel unease that he'll do something to her, and then reaffirms her as his queen. In the next scene, we see a familiar sight, House Frey and their castle, the twins. Game of Thrones fans will remember how the twins were fairly important for Rob's army to move down south to fight the Lannisters, and that remains true here. Jace, having secured the alliance with the Starks in the first episode, had to come here next to ensure that the northern armies won't have to waste time getting to the action when they eventually do get here. The Freys are also a powerful bannerman of House Tully, and therefore can be used to reinforce the Riverman host that Daemon is building up. We also see that Rhaenyra reaffirms that the path she walks has never been trod, which makes me think she means to bring up the dragon seeds, who have had their own scenes sprinkled throughout the season. The reason I think this is because, in Targaryen slash Westerosi history, dragons have fought each other before in a previous civil war, so this isn't anything new. And the preview ends with quick shots of her three main characters before Cole says what we must do now is terrible. I think Cole may be putting forth the idea that putting Aegon out of his misery may be the best course of action since he had most of his body burned, unless the maesters are constantly feeding him milk of the poppy to ease the pain, but even then, it's it's not looking good. Surviving dragon fire is very rare, and no, Targaryens are not fireproof. What happened with Danny in Game of Thrones was a very special thing that involved magic and a bunch of other stuff, at least in the book. In the show, it's basically hinted at that Danny is a very, very, very special Targaryen, and yeah, Aegon is not the one.